Well, good morning and welcome to House of Hope Atlanta, where life with God is better in every way. In every way. today oh father we honor you God for who you are we thank you Lord God for making provisions we thank you oh God for making ways out of no ways oh God we thank you oh God for you are king of kings and lord of lords God meet every need right now God in the name of Jesus whatever they stand in need of father let them know Lord God as they give you the glory you've already met it oh God you've already made the way you've already provided God and we thank you for that God we honor you today oh God we can and I say thank you enough for your goodness, oh God. We love you today, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, God. We pray, Lord God, that we turn this service over to you. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place, oh God. We need you now, Father, like never before. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Can we all stand, if you're able to, for the word of God? Today, our scripture is going to be coming from Psalms 34, 1 through 8 from the New King James Version. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Come on, how many of you come to bless the Lord? Somebody shout, I will bless the Lord. Come on, can we go before the Lord now and praise and worship somebody? Give God a praise right now if you know that he's worthy of all the glory and the honor. Come on, come on, come on. Clap those hands. Everybody, make some noise in the room now. Magnify the Lord.
make some noise right there. Come on. Say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, one more time. One more time. Come on, sing that again. Sing it again. Come on. Say, bless the Lord. Hey. I need to hear the praises in the room. Come on. Come on. Say, bless the Lord. Come on. Here we go. Let's go to the drive.
continually be in my mouth. Come on, if his praises shall continually be in your mouth, let me see you do it. Let me see you. Let me see you give him the praise that he's worthy of this morning. Our God is a great God and he's worthy to be praised. Come on, come on, come magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt God's name together. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. If you would nudge your neighbor, say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Just in case you don't know that you are welcome, you can have your seats briefly. Just in case you don't know that you are welcome on behalf of Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr., Lady Andrea Smith, and the entire House of Hope family, we welcome you to our worship, our summer shift. Somebody say, it's the shift, it's the shift, it's the shift. Our summer shift worship experience. Our online community is with us as well. And so we want to welcome you personally, global family, our online community who's watching. Tell us in the chat where you're watching from so that we can say hello in addition there's a QR code on the screen and if you're visiting with us in person or online I need you to take your other device your other social media device your camera device and what I want you to do is I want you to point that camera towards the QR code and we're gonna send you a very special message really quickly if you're visiting with us in person will you stand so that we can see you come on and stand ah I see you I see you. Will you remain standing for a moment? We want to personally welcome you and give you some special instructions. Look at, the, look at these beautiful visitors. Want to give you some special instructions. We have a gift that we're going to give you. We have a special gift that we're going to give you at the close of our worship experience. So we need you to meet us at our welcome center. Amen. Let's give these wonderful visitors another hand. While the Spirit of the Lord is still moving, we want to do a couple of things really quickly. Um, if we have any children and youth, children are one of God's most greatest gifts to the church. And so if you're a children, if you're a child or a youth between grades one and twelve, will you stand at this time? Amen. If you're a student in grades one through twelve, stand. All right. I'm gonna direct you to my right, your left. If you see the young lady who's walking out of the door, she's right there to my right, your left. You want to meet her? You got a couple on this side. Come on, let's give these young people a hand. Don't they look beautiful? Look at these beautiful young people. A church with young people is a church with life. That's a growing church. Amen, amen. Come on, come on, let's continue to clap for these students. They could be anywhere, but they're in the house of the Lord. They're worshiping. And we thank God for them. At this time, let's attend to the screens for our hope happening. Greetings, family. I am back again to keep you informed on what's going on here at the House of Hope. Now, you may see again that my co-host, Mr. Corey Butts, is MIA, but it's okay because he is living La Vida Loca for his birthday, so I'm not mad, all right? Now, back to business. So we've been telling you to save the date for our church-wide annual picnic. It's coming up fast and furious, so it is scheduled for July 22nd, and we wanna be able to include you in our count. So if you have not done so already, please register by texting the word PICNIC23 to 678-201-1351. It's gonna be a great time with games, food, and fellowship. We definitely appreciate those of you that are watching us virtually today. And we wanna make sure that you are connected in every way. So if you have a prayer request, just text the word prayer. If you wanna be saved, just text the word salvation. And if you'd like to become a member of the House of Hope Atlanta, just text the word connect to 678-201-1351. Now we can't let any of you forget about the invitation. I want you to think about how a simple invitation helped to change your life. We wanna encourage each and every one of you to extend an invitation to this great church because we know that those invitations will help to change lives. Now you can go to the church's website, hohatl.org for some creative tools to help you get the conversation started. And also you'll find more information on our in-person and virtual worship services. Now visitors, if you're visiting with us today, please make sure you stop by the visitors booth on your way out. We have a special gift for you.
Now that's all I've got for today, but I do want to mention there is one more birthday this year, this month that we need to acknowledge. It's coming on June 30th, and I just want to be the first to say happy birthday, Pastor. Our wonderful Pastor Smith is going to be celebrating his birthday on the 30th. So round of applause for that. It is totally a blessing. But that's it all. That's it for today. Thank you. And remember that life with God is better in every way, every day. Be blessed. And this is the day the Lord hath made. We're here to rejoice and we're here to be glad in it. I'm so thankful to have this privilege to worship with you, my Hope Global family. I want you to know that God is good all the time. And all of the time, God is good. When you think about the things that God has brought us through, the storms that God has brought us over, uh, it should make us all leave with the refrain, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our sides, where would we be? I want to thank you and welcome you again to our experience. Listen, out of all the places you could have tuned in to today, for you to think enough of us, it means the world to us. And so if you're watching through a platform that will allow you to subscribe, like, or share, do that right now so somebody else can get a daily dose of hope. We're hope dealers here, and our concern is to make sure that we have hope that always gives faith a job. And so I'm thankful for you, 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 and you for thinking of that robbery to tune into our worship experience on today. Listen, I'm excited that we're not just bringing hope today through cyberspace and through this worship experience, but we've been blessed to bring hope to so many people in a variety of ways. Our church is a church that uh, is, de is dedicated to lifting the spirits and to encouraging others. And, and your support uh, of our ministry allows us to do just that. I mean, I'm so thankful that even though mental health needs and mental health concerns have risen astronomically since the pandemic, uh, so has our investment in mental health uh, screenings and in mental health support. And so those who have lo longed for therapy or some safe haven where they could just talk and express what's going on emotionally, I'm excited that we have been a hub uh, for advocacy for those uh, for uh, for those of us who just want to maintain our mental health is so important and so through our Haven House Counseling Center and through our pastoral care departments we've been able to really share with so many people not just here in person but also virtually around the world all that is happening because of wonderful people like you and while we are in this worship experience even in East Africa now uh, we have a great opportunity and we've been providing mental health uh, needs and providing for mental health needs there in Rwanda at the same time while we're building a school and a church there in East Rwanda. Our Haven House and our Tabitha's House have both have a footprint there in East Africa. Listen, that's all because of you. We're building a school there with the, uh, with the we have 700 students there in our school and we're building a great big coliseum there that's gonna allow the school to be able to have um, educational programs for the students, a great worship assembly place, and also just a place where the community can gather. And these things are happening uh, in a whole nother land. Why? Because you believe in ministry. And while we've been involved in human trafficking for since 2012, uh, we're grateful that so many others are bringing attention uh, to this very, very fast growing evil that is plaguing our world. It's the second largest criminal enterprise in the entire world, only second to the illegal drug trade. And so because of you, our Tabitha's house now owns two residences, and we're hoping that at the end of this year, we have the first house in Georgia for young boys ages 11 through 15 who've been victimized by human trafficking. And so this is something that is taking place where young girls are being fed, being clothed, they're receiving uh, advocacy, uh, evaluations, clinical detoxifications. All these things are happening because you believe in this ministry and because you support this ministry. And so we we want to partner with other outreach organizations that are doing great things, but I want you to know that mental health and human trafficking have been flagship outreach programs of our church that have been blessed because of your support. Not only that, we've fed literally tens of thousands of people over the past three years through our own partnerships and through your contributions. And so I just wanna let you know that whenever you sow a seed into this kingdom, whenever you give, you help us to touch the world. And yet there's so much more 
that we can do. There's so much more that God is calling us to do that we need your help. He's called us to be the salt of the world and the light of the world, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And with your support, we can be just light and salt to blight, to blight air, bl areas that are blighted, areas that need illumination. So we need your help, please, ma'am, please, sir. At the same time, while we've been doing all these other things, we also have been making some significant capital improvements on our campus. As a consequence, uh, we've been worshiping uh, with you through our summer shifts from our Hope Theater. I want you to know that since 2009, when we acquired this campus, uh, we have not been able to have a public worship experience uh, for our entire church. But because of your support for the first time, we're now worshiping in the summer shift in our Hope Theater. Uh, because of that, we've been able to increase uh, the quality of our production to you, those who are watching through Hope Global. Uh, we've been able to do a whole lot of things that's going to make it more professional and more five-star just for your worship experience. And so I'm, I'm excited about it. And while we're doing this, we're still making plans and renovations to our, our Hope Cathedral. And we're also our Hope Sanctuary, which is the next project, which is near our gym. So uh, your support here has been just astronomical over the past three years. Uh, every building on our campus, all seven buildings, have had some type of renovation take place. A very, very massive campus, a massive structure uh, that had a lot of things that that had not been taken care of for a while and so but because of you you made a difference and so we want to continue to be a blessing to the world and so if you're in Atlanta or Alaska wherever you're viewing this service from I want to encourage you to continue to invest in this portion of Zion listen every time a soul is saved Every time a life is changed through this ministry, and because you are a partner with us, God also credits that to your account. I'm here to tell you uh, that we want to be responsible with your gifts. We want to make a big difference to take care of our staff and to make sure that we do ministry with kingdom quality. And so I need you today to give as God has prospered you. Come on, give a best seed to the Lord. I'm gonna ask God's blessings now on our gifts, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the various methods by which you can give on today. So let's pause now for a word of prayer. God, we thank you that you give seed to the sower. Thank you that you are the giver of every good and every perfect gift. Oh Lord, all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. Lord, we thank you that you have blessed us with means. We thank you that we have been the recipients of your providential blessings. And because of that, We've come to return a portion of that which you've entrusted into our hands. And so, oh Lord, on today, because of faith, love, and obedience, we've come to sow. We've come to give into the kingdom. So now, Lord, would you receive every gift and every giver? Lord, let no one lack or let no one have a need after giving these gifts on today. We know we're living in difficult times and so many things are happening financially, but your word tells us that the cattle upon a thousand hills belong to you. And we even know that if we seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, that all these other things shall be added. Would you provide for those who have a desire to give but have it not to give so they can provide for their families and they make a tangible contribution for kingdom building. Lord, receive these gifts and sanctify them now in Jesus name we thank you that if we give you give back to us good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over will you allow men and women to give into our bosoms and so receive these our gifts now we pray in your name amen 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 listen thank you so much for tuning in there are several ways you can give first you can give by text to give and that way that that, that method is on the screen now several codes h-o-h-a-t is for tithe, H-O-H-A-O -O is for offering, H-O-H-A-G-F, that's God first, that's the building fund. We need you to help us as we are still renovating our theater here, our Hope Theater, our Hope Sanctuary, as well as our Hope, as well as our Hope Cathedral. So we still have three Hope projects on the way and we need your support. You can text those uh, codes to 678-201-1351. Again, 678-201-1351. If you wanna give by Cash App, uh, it's on the screen now, dollar sign H-O-H-A-T-L, Zelle Finance at gtrbc.org. If you wanna give through the website, it's on the screen now, just click the giving links and follow the prompts accordingly. 
or if you want to send it to the P.O. Box, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 361 499 Decatur, Georgia 30036. Again, our P.O. Box is 361 499 Decatur, Georgia 30036. Thank you so much for your gifts today. And I pray that because of your gifts, that God is going to open you the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. May God bless you because of your gifts. We're going to continue in worship uh, and we're going to continue to worship our Lord together. And we'll be back in a moment with the word of God for today. Let's continue to worship our God. Our praise team is coming now to bless us with music. Let's worship God together in Jesus name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give all the June babies a hand. Any other June babies in here? Any other, any other June babies in here? Yeah. Let me see all the June babies. All the June babies. Please stand. I want to see all the June babies. All the June babies. All the June babies. Come on, y'all give these folk that were born in the greatest month of the year a hand. Come on, give them all a hand. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. Well, this is the day the Lord hath made, and we're here to rejoice, and we're here to be glad in it. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord on today? How many of you are glad to be here? Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you. Amen. I bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Certainly, we thank God for all of the visitors who are sharing with us. First, second, third time. Come on, another hand for all of them. I don't know about you, but God is a God who has done great things for us, and he continues to do great things. And I'm just so thankful that he's doing great things for you and great things for me. He's made a way. He's brought, us, brought me out. He's seen me through. I'm going to be a witness for him. I'm going to let my little light shine no matter where I go. I, because when I worship God, we worship him in spirit and in truth. And I don't know about you, but I will bless the Lord at all times because he has done great things. I couldn't wait to get here this morning. I said, I couldn't wait to get here this morning. I couldn't wait to get here this morning to worship and to praise God with my brothers and sisters in Christ. He has done great things for me. Has he done great things to anybody else in this place? Hallelujah. Look at the name and say, he's done great things for me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This song been in my spirit for a few days. I'm going to hit it. I got a little, got a little time for him. He's singing. He has done great things for me. Anybody remember that one? I said great things. Great. I said great thing. Great thing. He has done great thing. That's old school there. Anybody remember the old school? I said he's done great things. Come on. Do we have a witness? Somebody say great thing, great thing. That's how they make a Georgia. Great thing. He has done great thing. Lord have mercy. Growing up 928 into the road, making Georgia. He has done great things. Anybody from Kilsa Road? Anybody from Mason Avenue? Remember that one? I said great thing, great thing. I said great thing, great thing. He has Lord have mercy. <laughs> I'm gonna let my little light shine. I'm gonna let my little light shine. Somebody say shine, 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 shine. Shine, shine. I said shine, shine. Shine, shine. He has done great things. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Come on from the top. He has done great things. I don't hear nobody. Come on. Back on your life and realize it. He's done great things, great things. I said great things. He has done great things. Say that he said, I'm gonna be a witness for him. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a witness for him. Somebody say witness, a witness, come on. One more time for the top. Say he's done great things. He done. He has done great things for me. Somebody say great. Help me say great. I said great things.
on, give God praise. Give God praise. My, my, my. Now y'all help me say great things. I say great things, great things, great things, great things. If he was an average God, he deserved average praise. If he was a mediocre God, he deserved mediocre praise. But because our God is a great God, he is greater. Give somebody a fist bump and say great thing. I'm gonna give you about 60 seconds to give him a great thing praise right now. Open your mouth. Shout hallelujah. Take a moment and give him a great thing. and clap your hand, give him a great praise, an incredible God.
That's why we came. That's why we came. We didn't come to watch Creed. We didn't come to watch the indictment proceedings on television. We came here. You set your clock at 7 in the morning, got your clothes out to come to worship. And so since you came here to, for worship, you ought to at least worship since you're here. Anybody came to worship him? Anybody came to bless him? Fire! Goodness! <laughs> And your mercy, and your mercy toward us, fire, fire, and your mercy. Anybody? And your mercy toward us. I don't hear nobody. For your goodness and your mercy, let me hear you. My, 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 and your mercy, and your mercy toward us, everybody, toward toward us. for your goodness and your mercy, for your goodness, for, for your my, 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 goodness. and your mercy, y'all sound for church, uh, and, and your, your mercy toward us, my, my, we offer praise, we offer, we offer. Tell you're worthy of the praise, everybody. You are that. Come on. your Bibles. I'm going to jump in right here. <laughs> Book of First Kings. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 17. Hallelujah. He has done great things. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't you do that. <laughs> my God, I felt something. Woo, glory. My, 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 my. First Kings 17. You ought to bless the Lord. I'm on, I'm on. Just give me a minute to get myself together. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. That's old school praise and worship. Before we called him praise and worship, said, "Help me say it again one more time." You are the blessed. Oh my soul, and all my 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 my. I came to bless him this morning. Come on, come on. Y'all so look, y'all look good back there worshiping. Come on, help us out. Bless his name. Why, why do I get so excited? Why do I get so excited and worship? Here's why. Listen, y'all. Because he's done great things. He has done great things. Am I only somebody he's done great things for? He has done great things. He Lord have mercy. Come on. He has done great things. He done great things. Come on, bless his name, bless his name. Just one more time, one more time. One more time, sound good up here, Corey. Just one more time. Come on, he's done great things. He's done great things. I said, he, he. Oh, help myself. Done great things. When I look back over my life and realize where he brought me from, he, oh, help myself. Won't you just wave your hand if he's done great things for anybody else in here? One last time, say, he done Come on, give God praise right now. Would you give God praise? Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for thank you for the spirit of worship in this place. Oh, a new place, but you're the same God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord, for the intimacy and oh, the praise of your saints. Oh, our souls will make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear their love and be glad. We've come to magnify you together. Thank you, Lord, that when praises go up, not only do blessings come down, but the blesser comes down because you inhabit the very praises of your people. Thank you. We sense your presence. And when you're in the building, souls are saved, bodies are healed, and deliverance will come. Now, God, have you in this place. Stretch out your hand of mercy, your hand of deliverance. Speak supernaturally in somebody's life today that we may give you the glory and that we may continue to be conformed to the image of your son, Jesus. Lord, Spirit of the living God, would you fall fresh on us even now and have your way in this place in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Certainly, we thank God for our ministers who are here, who are sharing, all who shared, our ministers in training, our deacons and all of you. Uh, children of our great God, those who are in this beautiful room and those who are watching online, we greet you. 
in the name of Jesus who is our Christ. It's only by that name that every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. I was talking to my brother the other day. He said, well, how do you feel about the service? I said, brother, I feel like I felt uh, at 2600 HF Shepherd. I feel like I felt at 656 L Street in Macon. Amen. This feel like home. Amen. When the saints are praising God together and having church together, not spectating, but participating. Yes, Lord. Yeah. You hear somebody shout over here. You hear somebody shout over here. Yeah, it's like when you put popcorn. Yeah, popcorn praise. Amen. Amen. Not crock pot praise, but popcorn praise. Some energy and life. Amen. Because if you have breath, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. This, this month I'm preaching from the theme, The Next Play. And in keeping with that, I want you to come to 1 Kings chapter 17. And you see these words in verse number 2. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah saying get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there so Elijah went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook verse 7 our key verse says and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land now verse 2 it says and the word of the lord came to elijah saying get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook cherith and it shall be that thou shalt drink, thou sh that thou shalt drink of the brook. God said, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. Verse seven. It came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. I want to talk simply from this thought this morning. When the play changes, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say, when the play. When the play changes. Israel had had a variety of play changes. The first play for their government would be that they would be ruled or governed through what was called theocracy. In which God would rule over his people with chosen men and even a woman who would be called judges. That was the play called by God. In order to implement that play, God raised up Othniel and Ehud and Shamgar and Deborah and Gideon and Abimelech and Tolar and Jair and Ibdam and Elam and Abdam and Samson to rule the people theocratically. But then the Hebrew people wanted to call an audible on what God had called. They noticed the governments of the pagans and instead of theocratic rule, they wanted monarchical rule. They wanted to have a king like the other nations. Let me pause parenthetically just to insert here. You have to be careful when you start admiring what you think other folk have. And that's one of the dangers and even the tragedies of this social media world. It has caused people to have a negative self-image about themselves, thinking that they have to compete with someone else's photograph not knowing that often it's a bunch of filters, fakeness, and phoniness. And people are losing real joy trying to emulate that which is fake. 
God acquiesced to the will of Israel and said, since you want a king, you need to be careful what you ask for. So God goes to the inconsequential village of Gibeah and raises up a fellow whose name was Saul, allows the play to be changed. Monarchy was instituted with Saul and then David and then Solomon and then Rehoboam. 931, the play changed again. Rehoboam's foolishness and unwillingness to listen to wise counsel caused the nation of Israel to split. Ten northern tribes choosing a guy whose name was Jeroboam to be her king in the two southern kingdoms, Judah, keeping Rehoboam as its king. At the time of this text, the nation has split in twain. And at the time of this text, God is allowing King Ahab to rule there in the northern kingdom. Uh, unfortunately, Ahab has forgotten about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, Abraham, uh, uh, the, the time of this text, Elijah uh, is not called yet, but Ahab has begun to look at political complicity and wants to foment his own strength. And so he sees a woman who did not serve the God that he served. She served a God who's called Baal, B-A-A-L, Baal, a Canaanite God, a God of fertility, a God of rain. And so in order to foment his own leadership, he married a woman who did not share his same faith. Let me add again, be careful when you connect with that which God has not ordained. And so in order to make this marriage make sense, he forms somewhat of a hybrid faith where he could worship Jehovah and Baal simultaneously. Not knowing that God had already said, I'm a jealous God and thou shalt have no other God before me. God here in some type of righteous indignation finds himself with the anthropomorphic quality of jealousy and even anger. The Puritan preacher Jonathan Edwards would call this a case of sinners in the hands of an angry God. And so in order to exact and enact punishment and judgment on this new faith that worshiped Jehovah and Baal simultaneously, God tells Elijah to go to the palatial palace in Samaria and prophesy on my behalf. But don't tell the king he's going to get a car in three days. <laughs> don't tell the folk they spin around four times their blessing is coming. But tell them because they've turned their backs on me that I'm going to let a famine come in the land. And there will, be, will not be any rain until I say is going to rain. And so as a consequence of Elijah's actions, God institutes a seven-year famine there in the land when there would be dry and arid conditions. However, even when the conditions were dry and arid, God comes to Elijah in 1 Kings 17 and 2 and says, Elijah, I want you to go eastward. Find this transjordanic area called Cherith. And when you get to Cherith, know this, that although there will be no rain in the land, there will be no evaporation, foliage, supplies won't be accessible. The good news is I have already ordained and consecrated that a brook is going to bring you water. Uh, let me just insert again. I don't want you to be troubled by what's happening in our world. I want you to be careful about your mental health. And don't get caught up watching CNN and C-SPAN and MSNBC all day long trying to figure out what's going to happen in government and who's going to run for president next year. Don't let the talk of inflation drive you crazy and make you feel you can't live your life because even if there's a famine in the land, even if inflation is still high, I still believe that God has a brook for his children. Am I talking to anybody who can testify that you still believe that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God? 
I, still, I want you to know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that will, if it's Trump or DeSantis, if it's Biden or if it's Kamala, please understand this. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Are y'all going to take the brakes off me here? Oh, a seed begging bread. And so while he's there at the brook, God says, Elijah, for seven years, there will be no rain in the land. And the play call is for you to make your habitation by this place in Cherith. And so for three and a half years, for 39, for, for, if would, for, for 42 months, uh, Elijah has enjoyed the security of the same play call. Uh, yeah, there he is for 42 months. For three and a half years, God has commanded the waters of the brook to not evaporate. And then God commanded a ravens and ravens, birds who were scavengers, birds who were only concerned about their own culinary diet, to bring him bread every morning and every evening. It was strange. God did not command a dove. Dove symbolizes the Holy Spirit. You'd have thought that God would have sent a dove to bring him food every morning, every evening. But God says, no, it won't be a dove. It's going to be a raven. In other words, I'll use strange strategies. I'll use unlikely people and unlikely things to get a blessing to you. As a matter of fact, if I want to, I'll even use your enemies. Y'all got the brakes on, do it, to be a blessing to his people. And so for 42 months, for three and a half years, Elijah has enjoyed the play call of God's stability. Water from the brook, bread from the ravens. But then three and a half years into this play call, God decides, robbers, to change the offense. I'm glad you I can hear you, brother. God changed the offense. And now God institutes a new play call. Verse 7 is a troublesome verse. It says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Now that's a problem for me because God is the one in verse 2 and 3 who told him to go and reside by the brook. Now the problem for me theologically is why would God lead you to a place and allow you to get comfortable in that place and find security in that place and comfort and contentment in that place. And you know it was him that sent you. And then without warning, without notice, without a tweet, without a call, without an email, without Morse code, a carrier pigeon, a message in a Bible, not even through MySpace, Instagram, or TikTok, or Twitter, God, changed the play and did not invite you into the huddle. Y'all quiet on me here. Some of you have been going to jobs that you know God gave you the job. And you've been comfort in that job that used to bring you joy and contentment and excitement. You used to be excited to get there because you prayed for it. And now the thing that you pray for is getting on your last nerves. I wish somebody talked to me here. Uh, some of you Pray for that relationship. Oh, you sung Luther's If Only for One Night. But now Luther's If Only for One Night has turned to BB's. The thrill is gone. What happened when that person that used to bring you life and sustenance and enjoyment, my mind seeing now that what you once enjoyed is now empty and vain. Can I tell you why? Because we serve a God who if he wants to, he can change the play. And not only can God change the play, he does not need your permission. He does not need your vote. He does not need your inclusion. He does not need your knowledge. The question is, what do you do when the play changes? I had to ask a text this question, God, why do you change the plays on the lives and in the lives of the people that you say you love? God, God, why is it that you would change the play? And God said to me, here's why I have to change the play in your life. Even if it makes you uncomfortable. He says, here's why. Because I have to change the play, number one, because it prevents you from being stuck. Wow. 
prevents you from being stuck. Verse 2, Elijah, the word Lord came and said, go and hide thyself by the brook Cherith. I've already given you prophetic inclinations. Your name means Yahweh is my God. You're going to be a prophet. You had a prenatal ordination. Oh, before your dad planted the seed, and your mom's womb released the egg. They connected to form a zygote. The zygote became an embryo. The embryo became a fetus. You had three trimesters. Before the process of gestation, I'd already anointed that you would be a prophet to the nations. You are a prophet of God. And yet for 42 months, Elijah has been sustained, but not prophetic. For three and a half years, He's done nothing that we know of that has connection or affinity to his call. For three and a half years, he's been by a brook. We've heard nothing prophetic come from his lips because he's been in hiding. Some of you are wondering, why is it? That seemingly people on my job who show up late and leave early. They lay off on Fridays and Mondays before and after holidays. Never show up on time, never do a decent day's work for a decent day's wage, but they get the promotion. I bring coffee twice a week and donuts every Friday. And seemingly I'm stuck here in a cubicle in a place of hiding. Are y'all going to talk to me here? Why doesn't anybody see me? When is my time coming? I came to tell you this. Listen very carefully. Just because you're not visible does not mean you're not valuable. And maybe God has you in a place of hiding because he's preparing the blessing for you or he's preparing you for the blessing. Maybe God has in a place where he is protecting you because you have the gift but don't have the patience. You have the anointing, but don't have the character. So let me let you stay there for a minute to cultivate what's in you, because if I get it to you too quickly, you won't be able to handle it. Are y'all gonna help me here? It reminds me of my grandmama back in the day. I never shall forget my grandmama when they made cakes. Somewhat telling my age here, but back in the day when they made cakes, they didn't always have ovens with lights on them. And you can make a cake and put the cake in the oven. But you can't look and cut a light on to see if the cake is ready. And sometimes when you put the cake in the oven and can't see when the cake is ready, sometimes in an amateurish and neophyte way, you can take the cake out because it looks ready. And get your knife and cut the cake. And you cut the cake and the cake looks done on the outside but it's not done on the inside. And once you cut it, you can't put it back in the oven because then it'd be like some of those cakes y'all bring to Thanksgiving. It'll bring too dry. Are y'all gonna help me preach here? But then somebody came up with a great concept that even without lights in the oven, what we'll do is we'll put toothpicks. I wish I had somebody who made cakes and didn't buy them from Publix. And what you do when you get the cake out the oven, you pull the toothpick and look at the toothpick. And when you pull the toothpick out, if there's anything runny on the toothpick, the cake ain't ready. So you put it back in the oven. And you pull it back out and pull out the toothpick. And when you don't see any moisture on the toothpick, then you know the cake is ready. Some of you wondering why you've been poked. Some of you wondering why you've been put in the heat. And you're wondering when God is going to take you out the fire. God's told me to tell you because you ain't ready yet. I got you in there because I'm developing something for you, but I'm not trying to destroy you. I'm trying to develop you. I wish I had somebody who can say, any way you bless me. Don't you be frustrated because uh, it feels like you're stuck now. Because the same God who sent you there is the same God who knows how long to keep you there. And when God gets ready, 
He can pull you out of any circumstance, situation of toxicity and negativity that does not line up with your destiny. Somebody say, when you get ready, I'm ready, Lord. Yeah, he said, he says, listen, 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 I, 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 I have to, I have to change your play uh, to prevent you from being stuck. Elijah, you've been there 42 months. If I don't change it, you'll stay there. But now I know you're ready. I'm changing it so you won't get comfortable. How many of you are so comfortable in that place? Won't start your business because you're too comfortable. Don't want to go back to school because you're too comfortable. Don't, write, don't want to write the book. Don't want to institute the program because you're comfortable. Sometimes God says, if you don't do what I told you to do, I'll change your play to force you into your destiny. My God, he said, I got to change the play to prevent you from being stuck. Number two, I got to change the play, here it is, to push you beyond survival. I want to push you beyond survival. Yeah, he calls the play. For Elijah to be by the brook in Cherith for 42 months, for three and a half years. And for 42 months, Elijah has been surviving. Can I tell you his survival plan? Water from the brook every morning, every evening. And every morning, every evening, the Raven Express, before you had DoorDash, Elijah had the Raven Dash. Ravens would drop by every morning, every evening and bring him bread. Yes. Father's Day. Elijah had water from the brook. Bread from the ravens. Fourth of July. Let me contextualize it. Water from the brook. Bread from the ravens. Labor Day. Water from the brook. Barbecue bread from the ravens. Thanksgiving dinner, water from the brook. Ravens brought the, that one turkey, bread. Christmas dinner, water from the brook. Bread from the ravens. January 1, water from the brook. Bread from the ravens. Easter dinner, water from the brook. Bread from the ravens. For three and a half years, his culinary expectation has been limited. Same beverage, same bread. For 42 months, he's eaten the same thing every day. He's been on a space of survival. Now, please don't get me twisted. Don't get me twisted. Don't, don't think, don't take this wrong. If water and bird food are God's best for me? Then like Paul, I've learned no matter what state I'm in, I've learned how to be content. God, if this is what you want me to have for the rest of my life, water and bird fruit, I'm thankful. However, if you got some filet mignon, and some Chateaubriand. And every now and then, let me chase it down with some Don Perignon. If you got more for me, then God, don't just let me survive, but push me beyond survival, because I'm ready to thrive. Am I talking to anybody in this house who you can be thankful for bird fruit, you can be thankful for going to Orlando to Disney World, but if God got Dubai in your future, Y'all quiet on me here. Oh, oh God, yeah, I appreciate going to, to Lakeland, Florida, but I sure rather go to London, England. Y'all quiet on me here. Oh, God. If a picnic by the Mother River is your best for me, I'm satisfied. But if you want me to have an Alaskan cruise, Well, entertainment and all you can eat. I'm ready, Lord. Because you know what? Too many of us have a, a, a survival mentality. And God sent me to tell some of you, you've been surviving too long. Get out the survival mentality and say, I serve a God who can let me thrive.
Oh, y'all quiet on me. And now unto him who is able to do exceeding, abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that's at work. Does anybody know we serve a God of more? More provision, more blessing, more breakthrough, more favor. We serve a God. Look at somebody quick say, I speak more in your life. Get out of a survival mentality, barely get along, and I want to thrive. Not living paycheck to paycheck, not having to go to work when I'm sick. God, give me survival where I can sit back and enjoy some of the fruit of my labor. Now, God, if this, your, if this is your best, if this is your best, I'm thankful. But my prayer is, in this season of my life, I want more. Wicked folk ain't the only somebody who can have more. Why did the saints for a long time have this poverty mentality? When I grew up in my mother's, my mother, her relatives, the Apostolic Overcoming Holiness Incorporated denomination, it, it was almost like you couldn't look good. Had to take a vow of poverty, and the broker you were, the more spiritual you were. The nappier your head was, the more holy you are. Y'all quiet. You can't put makeup on, or can't wear jewelry. Makeup ain't never sent nobody to hell. Come on, help me hear somebody. Man, we can have more. Go sit in the chair and get you a massage and get you a, a manicure and a pedicure in the summer and paint your toenails white. City girl summer. Y'all quiet on me. It's time for somebody to say, I want more. Somebody say, push me beyond surviving. Push me beyond surviving. I want more for my children, more for my grandchildren, more for my church, more for my business. Lift your hands and say, God, don't just let me survive. Let me thrive in every area of my life. And I speak favor, increase, and overflow into somebody's life right now in Jesus' name. Clap your hands if you receive it. Ooh, I feel God here. He said, listen. I got, I got the chain to play. I got the chain to play to prevent you from being stuck. I got a chain to play to push you beyond just survival. But then thirdly and finally, I got to change your play to propel you into the supernatural. I'm finished. Elijah? I got to dry this brook up and change your play. Stop waiting for a bird in Cherith when I got a blessing for you in a place called Zarephath. I've already commanded a widow woman who ain't gonna feed you bird food. She gonna have a hot meal waiting for you. Your first hot meal in three and a half years but I had to change the play to get you out of sack bird lunches. Y'all quiet on me here. He gets to Zarephath and sees a woman there, a widow woman. He says, can you bring me a drink of water? She brings him a drink of water. He says, well, while you're at it, can you bring me something to eat? She must have been a sister. Yeah, she was a sister. I believe she was a sister. Zare, I really believe. Not just because she was Zarephath, but her attitude. I, I like this. I like this woman. I like her because he says, can you bring me a drink of water? Can you fetch me a drink of water? She said, sure. She goes and fetches the water. Ain't nothing wrong if your man asks you to bring some lemonade. Sure. While I'm at it, ain't nothing wrong with that. Some of y'all are too strong now. Go get your own lemonade. What have you done for me lately? Ooh, yeah, ain't nothing wrong. 
Y'all quiet on me here. Ain't nothing wrong with fetching. Ain't nothing wrong with fetching the brother some lemonade. Ain't nothing wrong with being sweet and, and, and being kind. If you ask you for some lemonade, it's, it's reciprocal. Y'all not helping me here. You, you ask him for money. You ask him for money, but he can't ask you for no lemonade. Come on now. Fair exchange ain't robbery. Oh, y'all gonna help me preach this thing like I feel it. Ask her to bring some lemonade and she goes to get the le lemonade. Then he says, why you at it? Can you bring me something to eat? She said, hold up, time out, sir. Just one second. Hold, 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 hold. Time out. There's a famine in the land. Ain't no food nowhere. My husband died. Didn't give me a 403B or 401K. There's no governmental assistance. I got a little meal and a little oil for me and my son. For my son and I. I'm going to make this last cake. Grandma called it a whole cake. Make it for you, my son, and me. We're going to eat. And then we're going to die. I like this sister. You know I like her? Because she's sweet enough to say yes, but strong enough to say no. I respect you. I'm by myself, but I'm not so desperate. Then I'm going to let some new joker come in here and I feed him while my son's starving. Y'all got the brakes on me. Nothing makes, most, nothing makes me look, nothing looks worse than a lady who goes to work while your boyfriend plays PlayStation. All day long, eating your groceries and your kids got the white mouth, looking like baby's kids with hijacking clothes on. The devil's alive. If nobody got new clothes on, yeah, okay, that's, that's another sermon for another day. Another sermon for another day. She's sweet enough to say yes. I'll preach that next time. Strong enough to say no. He said, I'll tell you what, I get, I hear you, but the Lord sent me. And the Lord told me, if you cook mine first, thank God she'd already got confirmation from the Lord. She, she'd already been commanded by the Lord, according to verse 8 and 9. She's waiting on him to confirm what the Lord has said. Every man and woman ought wait for somebody to come in your life to confirm about you what God has already spoken about you in initiation. She makes his first. And as she made his first, he started eating. Guess what happened? The Bible says, Look here, verse number 11 through 14, that the meal, ooh, I feel God here, and the oil, because she obeyed God, and because the prophet had somewhere to go, and because he was a man of God and he wasn't trying to pimp her, because it was a real divine connection, God said, because you put me first, because I got work for him to do next chapter, I need him to be fed, I'm going to make sure Oh, I feel God that your cruise of oil and your meal never runs dry. Let me help you here. If, if eggs get to be $11 for 12, I'm still looking for my omelet. Y'all quiet on me here. Y'all, if gas gets back $6 a gallon, God just gonna have to do more with $20 worth in the tank. Am I talking to somebody who knows God has a way of stretching? If you give me your two fish and five barley loaves, won't it take care of you? Oh, I feel God. And they ate many days. And then the text says, and it came to pass, y'all. I'm finished. That her son died. Verse 14, 15, her son died. She goes, Elijah, did, 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 did you have something to do with my son's death? He was fine until you showed up. Elijah said, tell you what, give me the boy. He took the boy upstairs in the loft and in a spiritual way, stretched himself over the child. Text has three times. Come here, Jack Smith. One for the father. One for the son. One for the Holy Ghost. Oh, you don't hear me. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I believe, I believe, y'all let me just contextualize this, I can think with my own, I think with my own imagination that if Elijah was a Baptist deacon, that last time he said, Father, 
I come to you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain, earnestly desiring to be filled with thee. Can't y'all hear him? I believe Elijah prayed, Father, I thank you for my last night laying down. I thank you that my bed wasn't my cooling board. I wish I had some country folk. And my sheets were not my winding sheets. And on that third time, Elijah said, Father, I stretch and my hand to thee. No help I know if thou would draw thyself from me. And uh, where shall I go? On the third time, he stretched himself over that young child. And guess what happened? The third time, the little boy came back to life. In other words, Elijah is operating in supernatural power. But guess what? But if God hadn't changed his play, okay, y'all ain't got me. He still would be stuck at a brook waiting for birds to feed him and water to bring and water to quench his thirst some of y'all wondering what does this have to do with me but i came to tell you what god is doing he might be changing your play because there's supernatural provisions waiting for you on the other side I got a close here, but can I tell y'all a little testimony? 20 years ago, uh, uh, this same week, uh, one of my classmates from Morehouse called me and told me, he said, man, I keep having dreams about you. I said, what kind of dreams? He said, the spirit keeps telling me that you're going to be the pastor of my church. I said, man, what in the world are you talking about? I, I got a wonderful church. What is the name of your church? And he said to me, my church is Greater Travelers Rest. I, I, I wasn't familiar with it, but he said, I keep dreaming about you and you've been in my spirit. Now, you have to understand, you have to know him from Morehouse to know if he says something was in his spirit, it had to be God. Cause he don't talk about nothing being in his spirit. But y'all know what happened. He was right because uh, a few days later, God began to work on my own heart and say, do it, I'm getting ready to change your play. Yo, I was comfortable where I was. Loved my hometown, loved everything about it. But God told me this has nothing to do with you. I got to change your play in order for you to live by faith. And know what happened, y'all? Uh, in that obedience to the Lord, uh, we decided to put a house on the market. Uh, a house I just purchased. Uh, and the first day I put it on the market, uh, yeah, somebody put a contract on it. I said, Lord, this must be you. It didn't even make it into a realtor book. The first person who saw it said, I want it. And gave me everything I asked for. And then I asked the Lord, well, where am I going to live? I got a wife and a three-year-old son. Where am I going to live? He brought me to Metro Atlanta. Andre said, go down this street. Went down this street and we saw a house and she said, that's the house. I said, well, are you sure? She said, that's what I saw in my vision. We drove by. She said, drive back by it again. We turned around and went back the other way. She said, now drive back by it again. I drove down the street. She said, I drive by it. I said, now just wait just a second. You come on now, come. You, you, you're, getting too, you're getting too busy here. Drive by it again. I, I drove by it again. She said, now turn around, drive by slow one more time. I drove by it slow one more time. And the last time I drove by it, I, I looked in my rearview mirror. And when I looked in the rearview mirror, the strangest thing started happening. Uh, guess what happened to me? Uh, the rearview mirror started preaching to me. I said, the rearview mirror uh, start preaching to me. Uh, I said, the rearview mirror start preaching to me. Uh, do you hear what I said? Uh, I said, the rearview mirror uh, start preaching to me. Uh, it was a nine 
word sermon. And I close by giving y'all the review mirror sermon. The last time I drove by, here's what the mirror said to me. It said objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Y'all got the brakes on me. Do me a favor, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, God is getting ready to change your play. But when he changes your play, it's because he got something better. I said he got something better. If he changes your play, lift your hands. It may be uncomfortable. It may be scary. But God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. To close it, but I came with a word of prophecy. God told me to tell you in the next 30 days, somebody your play is gonna change, it's gonna be scary. But your destiny, your destiny depends on you throwing your hands up and saying, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Touch your neighbor's shoulder for the last time and say, neighbor, I prophesy along with the preacher that your next move is going to be your best move. Yeah, and be not dismayed. Praise God like you know he has more. I don't hear nobody. I don't hear nobody. I don't hear nobody. More provision. More power. More promotion. More salvation. More anointing. More favor. More deliverance. If you believe it, shout it out. I gotta let you go. Let me call for you. Some of you have been in a weird place. It seems uncomfortable. You're in the heat like you're being poked by the by the two picks of life and you're wondering why am I in this season I heard the Lord so clearly this week to say he said because your play is changing I wasn't supposed to preach this today, but somebody in this house it's, it feels like it's a weird place. Especially for those of y'all who control freaks. You have to know every step. Those of y'all who plan the family vacations and the family reunions and you don't, you pick out the t-shirt and what color we gonna wear every day and you don't pick the menu out and you got to run everything. God looks at you and he laughs. Because you thought by this time I'm supposed to have be married with the two kids and the dog and the cat and 
the fish tank and the picket fence, the minivan, taking the dog to the vet. You're like, what happened to my life? Just because you're not visible doesn't mean you're not valuable. But preach, I'm in my 40s now. Man, is he coming? Is she coming? When God ordains it, it's going to be the sweetest thing. You're going to be your most healed self. Sometimes God says, do you want to suffer or do you want solitude? And if solitude helps you to be healed so you won't suffer, I'm going to protect you by the brook to prepare you for him and her for you. That's how God works. I got to let you go here. But I want to, if you are here today, I want you to, I want you to find the nearest aisle and come up here right quick. I want to pray for you right quick. If you're here, you say, preacher, you were preaching to me today. If, if you were here. Come on, yes, yeah, come on down here now. Yes. I'm in a weird place. God, I... God, when is, when is the child coming? You sit back and you see your friends, everybody else, you wonder, is it, are you going to pass me by? Look, you got to come out of this with a testimony. You're too special. This child's going to be too special for you not to have a testimony to go along with it. God still works miracles and he chooses select people in order to manifest them. Elijah had to go through uncomfortability for three and a half years so he could walk in the supernatural. And y'all know what? That same Elijah was able not only to resurrect that boy, but in the very next chapter, he went up on Mount Carmel against the 450 prophets of Baal and called fire down from Mount Carmel. But if God had not changed his play, he still right now be drinking water from a brook, eating bird food, never walking in what God had ordained. And that's, what I'm, that's why I came to tell you if God is doing something weird in your life and changing your play, just say, yes, Lord. I don't have to see it. Just keep your hand on me. Give me peace in my spirit. I'm ready for manifestation time. I will be with you. I, I will be with you. I will be with you. I felt, I felt this so strong in my spirit all week. I will be with you. I'm letting y'all go in a minute. What have you been going through with that family? I, I will be with you. That's why the story. The story. If you, if you would only trust me. I know it's uncomfortable. God says, trust me. Even when your family turns their back on you, trust me. Here's my verse. I'll fight your battles. I'm letting you go. I'll fight. I'll fight your battles. Do y'all believe that? I'll fight your battles. I'll fight your battles I'll fight your battle if you if you would only trust me trust me mm, trust me trust me trust 
Listen, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. What I want you to do in this room, let's fill this room with the sound of petition and supplication. I want you to make your request known unto God. Now, I'm going to close the prayer out. But whether you're standing or whether you're sitting, or if you're watching me live at home, I want you to open your mouth. I want you to make your request known. God is going to do something through you that's individual, that's unique. I heard the Lord say to me this morning, he's moving somebody from surviving to thriving. You may not see it. When you're in it, you're not going to see it. But when you come out of this, you, when you come out of this, you're going to thank God for the pink slip. You're going to thank God for the demotion. You're going to thank God the company shut down. You're going to thank God the situation disappointed you. It was disappointment in the beginning. It's going to be destiny when you recognize the manifestation. God has moved you from, he's moving you from surviving to thriving. He's changing your play. I want you to agree with him. Tell him how you feel. I'm going to give you about 60 seconds. Let's fill this room now with the sound of petition and supplication. Open your mouth, saints. Let the devil hear you. Come on, open your mouth, saints. Begin to pray in your own way. Just say, Lord, here I am. I'm going through this in my situation. I'm going through this in my family. God, I need you to step in this situation. I, God, I love you and I bless you and I honor you. God, would you, would you grant me the desire of my heart? God, this is my concern. Come on, open your mouth, saints. If you're at home, watch it online. Touch your computer screen, your iPad. Connect your faith with ours. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. That's it, saints. That's it, saints. That's it, saints. Hallelujah. That's it, saints. That's it, saints. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. My, my, my. God, we bless you in this place. Thank you for these saints who've gathered. Those who are watching now online all over the world. Nearly every continent, those who are watching, we thank you. Lord, thank you for this word about Elijah. And Lord, when we're in the strange places of life, where it seems you change our play, change our relationship status, change the job. Many of us are in a season of, of transition and shifts. Help us to not get stuck on the old play. But you got more and better for us. And so in the name of Jesus, for everybody who's been stuck in a place, living beneath your best for them, would you release them? Release them from a poverty mentality. Release them from a lack. Let them know they deserve better in a relationship. Release them from being mishandled and maltreated and let them know, God, that they are a child of the King. I come against negativity and toxicity. Anything that's unhealthy, that's keeping them stuck in a place of pain, release them from Cherith and let them walk in Zarephath. God, heal them from the wounds caused by their parents. Lord, heal them from the wounds of the disappointment, of the expectation that has not yet manifested. I pray in the name of Jesus that this month will be the last month where they struggle with this. I feel God. And thank you that when you bring us out of Cherith, we'll never go back to bird food again. I thank you that our bird food days are getting ready to be over. I said our bird food days are getting ready. We're getting ready to walk in what you've ordained. If that's healing, if that's breakthrough, if that's the salvation of a loved one, if that's deliverance, if that's peace of mind, if that's joy, if that's ministry possibility, help us to walk in your ordained destiny. We leave our concerns on this altar. Those who've been pro poked and prodded by the two picks of life, those who feel like they've been in the heat and the heat is getting too unbearable, thank you that you're getting them ready. And when they come out this fire, Oh God, they're going to walk in a way they've never walked before. Because I have not seen, neither have you heard, nor has it entered the hearts of man. The good thing you prepare for those of us who love them. But you're going to reveal those things by your spirit. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name.
Now clap your hand, go back to your seat, say, I receive it. Come on, go back to your seat, say, I receive it, I receive it. Hallelujah. Go back. Trust me. If you, if you, trust me. Trust me. Ooh, trust me. If you, if you, my, 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 trust me. Listen, keep it right, keep it right there. Keep it while you keep standing. Keep it right there. If you stand with me for a second, we're almost finished. Listen, shh, listen, before we leave, just two more things we out. There's two more things we out. Number one, let me ask you a question. One day we go into a place, won't be no more brooks. John said, there's a city whose river makes glad the city of God. We go into a place, we, we won't sit by a brook no more. We can sit on streets, pay will go. It's only for those who, who accepted a king who's greater than King Ahab. His name is King Jesus. My question to you today, if you died today, are you sure that heaven will be your home? Have you made a personal decision that you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior? If you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you're not sure of that. If you die, that heaven is going to be your home. I wouldn't leave this place until I made a private decision and a public confession. I don't care who you are, where you've been, what folk have said. None of that matters. All that matters is that Jesus Christ loves you. And God's love covers a multitude of transgressions. His love is never failing. Is unending. People will stop loving you, but not our God. He loves you. So if you're here and you're not sure if you died that heaven will be your home, I want you to come and take this front seat right quickly. Say, preacher, I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus. Number two, maybe you are saved, but you're not actively involved in a local church where you're growing. You're not actively involved in a local church. If you're watching online, you want to accept Jesus Christ online while you're watching. Just text the word salvation to 678 201 1351. The information is on the screen right now. If you're in this room and you want to be a part of this church family, we'd love to be your church. I'd be honored to serve as your pastor. You don't have a church where you're growing. Maybe you grew up in church, but you strayed away. But now you want to get into fellowship, people you can do life with and grow with. If you're watching online, whether you're in Atlanta, or Alaska, Decatur, or Dubai, Georgia, or Ghana, Stone Mount or Sudan, you can be connected with this ministry while you're watching online. So if you're here, if you want Christ or you want a church, number three, you need to make some changes in your life. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here, keep it right there. I want you to find a nearest child and come down here and take this front seat to my far left. Right here, we have some white chairs. I want you to come down here and just take a seat on this front chair. I want Christ in my life. I need to be a part of a church where I can grow. I want to make some changes in my life. If that's you, we have some ministers walking in the aisles and deacons walking in the aisle. Or if you don't want to walk by yourself, just touch your neighbor on the shoulder. If somebody touches you on the shoulder, that means they want you to walk with them. The first step is you got to make the first step. Just come on down here right now and say, I want Christ to church, make some changes in my life. Man, woman, boy, girl, if you're here, come on down here right now. I'm waiting on you. If you want to be saved, want to be a member of the church, want to rededicate your life to the Lord, come on down here right now. I'm waiting on you. Man, woman, boy, or girl, I'm waiting on you. If you don't trust me, I'm waiting on you right now. Man, woman, boy, or girl, would you come? I'm waiting on you. Trust me. If you're here, would you come? Would there be one? I'm waiting on you. Trust me. I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah. If you would only trust me, Father, in the name of Jesus, that one who needs to come, would you move by your might, by your power, touch their lives so they can come down here right now. Come on. I said, trust me if you're here. Come on. 
if you're here, come on out here right now. Trust me, trust me. That's what God says. If you trust me, is that one? Mm, trust me. Hallelujah. Now come on, give God a hand clap of praise, would you? Give God a hand clap of praise, would you? Hallelujah. Listen, one more thing, any benediction we're out of here. Come on, just give God praise before we get ready to leave. Listen, a couple things right quickly before we leave. Today, uh, we have food next door in the atrium, and I understand that y'all ate everything Roy cooked last week. They said y'all ate everything on the menu except thank you and please come again. Amen. So I don't know if Roy cooked, I don't know who cooked, Roy or John, whoever cooked today, they have a meal right next door. You don't have to go outside. You ain't got to park nowhere. Just, just leave, the, leave the theater, walk straight down the hall into the atrium. Food is already there. They have turkey wings, salmon, meatloaf, baked chicken, collards and cabbage, squash, onion, squash and onions, green beans, sweet potato souffle, eey, macaroni and cheese, dressing, rice, gravy, cornbread, Cornbread, peach cobbler, and banana pudding. Yeah. So it's right next door if you want to have dinner or lunch. If you ain't got to go downtown and park and pay for parking and that kind of stuff, just, just walk out and walk straight ahead. And food is right next door, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, that you don't have to leave the building. And if you want to sit down there, I think they have places for you to sit there as well. Amen. Uh, please make sure you avail yourself to all the announcements. Please, ma'am, please, sir. So good to see y'all here today. Uh, thank y'all for being patient and and flexible um i want to thank you all for following leadership uh a lot of people in church don't follow leadership and i want to thank you all for following the leadership with this idea i was speaking to mr marquise earlier that every summer for three years prior to the pandemic as soon as i turned in the hallway to get to my office there was a big tube there that big tube was the air ducts that were from the portable AC unit that was in the back of the church. And some of y'all didn't know this, but we had to spend $15,000 a week to get that AC to pump into the building because we, we couldn't afford the $2 million to fix the air. So every summer from around May to around October, we was renting that thing every week, $15,000. So my spirit be shot before, before the church service. I'm serious. I would get sick literally every time I saw it, like, we spend this money for something that don't even stay. But we didn't have a choice. And we didn't think about this, this place, and, but thank God, and then we needed more space at the time, but thank God through the pandemic, we were able to get this building up. And y'all know what, we didn't have to rent nothing today. <laughs> nothing. That was 60,000 a month just renting a portable AC unit. Not this summer. Right? Not this summer. Our power bill is $50,000 a month. Every month. 50 grand. Not this summer. Hey Amen. So, so those y'all, man, I want to go back to my seat over there. I get it. You want to go back over there, but you been there was giving me a heart attack. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So it's, it's, it feels like there's no pressure to come here. And I can enjoy service. I can, I can be free and enjoy the worship without that burden over you. And so we'll take our time to fix all that. Because we got about a million and a half dollars worth of work we got to do. But we're not going to stress ourselves. I'm not. Now you want to go back, you want to go back next week? You write a check for a million and a half, we go right back over there. Amen. You know, that's the thing about it. It's always the people who give one dollar raise a million dollars worth of hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, let's just kind of, uh-uh, uh-uh. It feels so good to be here. I ain't got to stress myself out and stress our budget out. We can just be here and take our time. And it feels good. It sounds churchy. I can hear y'all say amen. Yeah. Man, it just feels churchy. Woo. I love it. So thank God for you. So uh, a couple of things I want to share with you. Uh, last week, uh, I think we did about $6,000, if I'm not mistaken, in toward the building fund. Because I'm going to ask y'all every week to give something 
to get this building up. And I want to be I want to be accountable like I always am to show you we made some progress uh, from last week to this one. Matter of fact, we rented we rented this building out yesterday for a funeral. So you see, 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 see how you looking now? Yeah, Miss Johnson from Johnson's Learning Academy. Her memorial was here yesterday. Amen. So people are already using it in the community. Israel Holton is coming by this week to look at it for his concert next month. See what I'm saying? So God is already turning dividends on your investment. Come on now, give God, give God. That's that's what I'm talking about. So a couple of things. So I want to show you uh, what we did, just so you see. We the balcony. I told you last week we're gonna have it ready. We don't have it. That's the hallway when we got started uh, early part of last week. I just want to show you. Keep going. Keep, that's the, we made, made, made some light changes. That's what the bathroom looks like. We're getting it out, cleaning out. Come on, keep going. I want y'all to just see what's going on so you see where I, that's the hallway upstairs in the balcony. Keep going. That's the hallway when they got started. Everything was a mess. Sheetrock issues, drywall. Keep going. So keep going. Just want to keep showing you everything that's going. Yeah, so they, they're fixing the holes, putting the uh, that's another hallway that goes to the other balcony, two different hallways. That's what it looks like on one side of the balcony. Keep going. That's the other side. As we get all the trash out of there, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, that's, that's they got the walls coming up. Y'all keep going. What you just want to see. We coming, you see? Yeah. Just keep going. I want y'all to see. Keep going. Yeah, keep, keep going. Yeah, we coming. So we, get, we, come, we coming. Got some lights. Keep, you see, see that? We coming. Keep going. I just want y'all to see. I, I ain't just talking. When, we, when you give, we can get stuff done. Keep going. Y'all keep going. Yeah, keep going. Y'all, like y'all keep showing the same one. Keep going. Oh, that's the trash. Y'all done had all service to get the pictures together and keep, keep going. Y'all ain't got none of the new hall. Okay. So that's, that, that's what, thank you. Here we go. That's it. That's it. Okay, keep going. Keep going. It's getting the paint done. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. No, mind. I should have sent it to I should have sent it to one of the ladies to do it. I know I sent it to. When you send it to a man, this is what you get. A man in the same pictures. But anyway, give, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Uh, so uh, I think we spent about, about $11,000 last week uh, on the lights for here, up there, downstairs, cold base. We had to do some electrical. And this week, we got to be a risers for the balcony and got to put... Um, video up there. So next week, we will have space in the balcony for people. Come on, give God praise. And the second thing we did was we do have, we now have sound and video in the atrium. Praise the Lord. The third thing we're going to do next week is we have a latency issue. It's called latency where the video in here is a little delayed. It's because of the signal. When you're throwing the signal, when you're doing things wirelessly, when it, you know, it's behind. So we got to fix the latency. So they said next week we have that fixed. Going to cost us a little bit to fix the latency issue. So next week you come, you'll see progress. We have some pictures next week that I'll personally pick out and send to Kronika to show you next week the pictures. So we won't see, go back to roots to see everything as you see the progress in order. All right, so let's give our media team a hand and our operations team a hand. Just let you see what's happening, all right? So with that being said, it's time for us to give. I want you to give your best offering to the Lord. Now, I want you to give your best offering to the Lord. I want you to give. I've, I need everybody to give your tithes and your offerings. And if you can give something special for the God first, that's the building fund. Um, Steve Harvey told a joke one day about the black church. He said, black church have a building fund for 30 years and they ain't put a doorknob on the church. <laughs> that is so true in too many cases. Uh, fortunately, that's not our case here. I'm thankful for our stewardship and budget committee. Sister Sabrina Wilburn, who's done a wonderful job with our stewardship and budget committee, making sure we have means available to do this kind of work. And so we're going to be meeting this week. Would you give our stewardship and budget committee a hand? They, they watch our budget. So what I want you to do, if you can, if you, if you got an extra $100 a day that you can give toward the, the God first, that's the building fund. I want you to, I want you to put that in there. Uh, uh, with your ties to help us to finish what we got to finish. We're going to do some more stuff. We're going to paint it here and do some more stuff once we get it all ready. But I think about another two or three weeks and we're going to have this building just like we want this particular room. And we got a few more rooms on the back we got to finish. But we're going to show you every week the progress. And we're going to ride this out. I would much rather put 15000 in this building to get it up and comfortable than renting something down there that don't stay and we still 
You, you understand what I'm saying? So we're going to be good stewards, and we're going to ride this out. Amen. And, uh, but it feels so good to hear y'all. I feel like I'm on HF Shepherd Drive. Amen. I do. It feels churchy. Amen. Good. All right. So we're going to make ready to give, and I thank you so very much. Uh, is that Miss Ella Carter back there? Was, that's Miss Ella Carter. That's from Macon, Georgia. One, 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 of, one of my sheroes growing up, longtime educator. And uh, my God, good to see you, Stiletta. Good to see you, Miss Carter. Y'all give Miss Ella Carter a hand. She, school board member. Wave at us, Miss Carter. That, wave at us. Y'all said that, that was, that was, that was a, all, all my friends, now we, we used to have a crush on her when she was our, she was our teacher. She was, a, she, was, she was and is a good looking woman. Amen. Hey, man, we didn't like our husband, but we liked her. We had a question on her. Good to see you. I'm so glad. I didn't know you were coming here. I see Stiletta. God bless you. I love you. Good to see you, Stiletta. Miss, Miss Carter, love you. Her, her husband, her, her father was a phenomenal preacher. Uh, late, Dr. Late, late Reverend Lim Stiles. He and my grandfather ran together in middle Georgia. Phenomenal preacher. Amen. Who's with the Lord now. Amen. Passed away in 1988. Amen. April of 1988 when he was filmed. I was just filming. One month before I started preaching. Never shall forget that. God bless you. All right, we're going to make ready to give now. Get your, if you need an envelope, lift your hand quickly. If you need an envelope, lift your hand quickly. If you need an envelope, lift your hand quickly. Amen. And if you want to give by phone, there are several ways you can give. You can text to give. H-O-H-A-T is for tithe. H-O-H-A-O is for offering. H-O-H-A-G-F. God first. I need y'all to put something in that God first. Please, put something in that. That's the building fund. If you want to write a check, just write, put the building fund on it. You want to put cash up, just put building fund to help us. We're trying to spend a few dollars each week so it's not too much. We're trying to break it down to get work done so we can be comfortable. But thank y'all for being with us. Thank y'all for being with us. Thank y'all for supporting. Some people don't support anything. But y'all have supported me almost for 20 years that I've been here. And I'm thankful. And I'm so excited. I feel better now. Today I feel better than I have in a very long time. I really do. I really do. I'm not, I'm not stressed about nothing. It's, it's bad when you come to church and you stress and not happy. And for years I'm preaching and y'all just unhappy and worried and stressed. How are we going to do this? How are we going to pay this? How we gonna... mm -mm, just... The Lord said, well, don't kill yourself. Amen. Because stress will kill you. And I just believe. Amen. I don't want to. Mm -mm, I want to enjoy life. Amen. Amen. Be, and be healthy. Amen. And when I get stressed, I get, you know, so now I can just be, I'm going to be, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a city boy summer too. Y'all wait until I finish <laughs> on this treadmill. Amen. Uh-huh. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to paint my pinky toe, pinky finger white like y'all. Amen. Shoot. It's going to be a city boy summer. Amen. In Jesus' name, respectfully. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. I love y'all so much. Thanks for being here. My brother Sam is here. Just Sam. Stand up, stand up, Sam. Stand up, stand up. This is, this is Sam Glickman, y'all. He's my barber. He's my, one of my best friends in life. Tell me, let people see you, Sam. Tell me, let people see you. He, he's, he's, now, he's, now, he's, now, he's now my creative director. So all the stuff I'm going to be doing, I want people to see. I want y'all to see Sam. So every, every stuff I'm doing, like for my podcast, uh, uh, social media, so he's going to be handling all that for me. And he, he got me on a diet and all that kind of stuff. He said, I'm going to get you right. Got my picture. Y'all give Sam a hand. That's my, that's my, that's my brother. And, um, and I, just, I love him. 20 years he's been my brother. I'm, and I'm, I'm on, I told him I'm going to get him a wife, too. I'm going to find him a wife. Yeah, I'm going to find him a wife right around here. I'm going to find him a wife. Amen. Right around here. Respectfully. Amen. Amen. Y'all give Sam a hand. I love him. I love That's my brother, y'all. Okay. Would y'all stand with us? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna be dismissed. Amen. I'm praying for you all and thank you for, your, thank you for your presence today. May God bless you this week. Amen. May God bless you this week. And if, that, and if you were that one that's in this weird place, a strange place, I heard the Holy Ghost say it to me, y'all, as clear as I can see your faces. It's just because I'm changing your play. So when that anxiety, you start like, what's going on? The Holy Ghost said to me, tell them your play is changing. And it ain't, it ain't always going to be comfortable because you've been comfortable there. You've been secure there. And if I let you stay there, 
You can always be beneath my best. Sometimes you don't even know that's better. Because you get so used to what was. Whenever the Lord says peace, there will be peace. Receive that in your spirit. Receive that. Whenever the Lord says peace, whenever the Lord says peace, there will be peace. My, 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 my. Receive that. Whenever the Lord says peace, my, 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 there will be peace. There will be peace. And now, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. And this week, in the next 30 days, and as God changes your play for the better, I speak over your life that he will give you peace. In every area of your life, I speak peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Have a great week. Whenever the Lord said peace, there will be peace.